What have you got against Michael Farmer except him being retarded enough for you to fry? <laughs> It's you, Michael. I'm not sure. AC Desperate. For what reason have you been accessing highly sensitive AC-12 files, namely D.I. Matthew Cotton's dying declaration? This wasn't me, sir. But I don't want to be somewhere I'm not wanted, so I'll take a transfer. And obviously, the person with the opportunity and means to frame both Michael Farmer and Timothy Ifield is DCI Ros Huntley. Your files should be handed over to a new, more impartial authority. What are friends for? Let me give you a different phone number. There's a network of corrupt police officers doing the bidding of organised crime. H. His name begins with H. H. Superintendent Hastings, you will be served with a Regulation 15 notice. The wound was very deep. If they didn't operate, you could have died. We've learned Mr. Huntley shares a solicitor with Michael Farmer. I represented Michael. What went on between myself and my client is privileged. I've got tangible concerns that she's involved in a serious crime. You were at the crime scene the night Tim Ifield was murdered. Nicholas Huntley, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Timothy Ifield. Hurting me! That was incredibly brave and honest of you, Mum. It was Ros. She's lying about everything. Everything. an adjoining room on such short notice. But the other one's just down the hall. I know it's difficult. It's just while the officers are at the house. Is Dad going to come here too? These things take time. Why aren't you doing anything? Why aren't you helping him? It's complicated. I want the other room. I think Nick Huntley would have risked leaving evidence here. His miss is a copper. Message for DS Twyla. There's a DS out here to see him. Received. DS Twyla. DS Railston, DC Antonioni. Murder squad. What can I do for you? Nick Huntley's solicitor's kicking up a stink. He's accusing Polk Avenue officers of favouring their own DCI story over his. Your chief super's worried the defence could use it in court. You're taking over. Sorry. Okay. Polk Avenue is starting the first round of interviews. There's no news yet. Damn it, she's done it again. We had that case in the palm of our hands. She's thrown everybody off the scent. Who's on it? Murder squad plus AC9 observing Jamie Dasford. AC9 Dasford. God give me strength. The whole thing's kicking off. We're not even in the game. Okay. Who from Murder Squad? Mr. Huntley, I'm Detective Sergeant Railston. This is my boss, Detective Chief Superintendent Hargreaves. We're Murder Squad out of 4th Street Station. None of us have any previous work connection mm -hmm. with DCI Huntley. However, detectives from AC9 will be observing in connection with ongoing anti corruption inquiries. Noted. What were you doing at Tim Myfield's flat? My wife, Roz, DCI Huntley, she... I was following her. All right. Why is that then? I suspected that she was seeing someone else. 
An affair. And was she? I believe so. That's what she told me with another police officer. A married man. Mrs Huntley denies an affair. And our inquiries find there was no other officer present that night. So you thought Tim Ifill was having sex with your wife? No. I don't know. How would I, you I describe your emotional state that evening, Mr Huntley? Were you in a frame of mind to control your wife's behaviour, no, Mr Huntley? No, no. To coerce her? No, she was the one that went to the flat. She went inside. There are no witnesses to your wife entering Timothy Ifield's flat. No CCTV, no traffic cameras, no mobile phone, GPS. Well, she left her mobile phone at home. So did you, pal. But I was in a rush. I'd forgotten it. So this fellow, this Timothy Ifield, who you may or may not have thought was having sex with your wife, what did you plan to do to the pair Nothing. Of them? Nothing. Why would I kill Timothy Ifield? How would I? Well, we'll look at three things. Opportunity. You were there. Means. Tim's not a big fella, not a fighter. They were nice in the flat. Motive. You believed he was having an affair with no, your wife. No, look, no, this is all Ross. She's trying to frame me. So it wasn't me, it was the one armed woman, eh? Is that it? My gaffer wants the 18 search of Huntley's home completed by first thing in the morning. Hi. Hi. How's it going? All right. I heard about your accident. How are you doing? I'm fine. So what's Nick Huntley been saying? She's not at liberty to disclose. And this was our case? Mm, not according to Assistant Chief Constable Hilton. He assigned you? Hastings didn't appreciate my ability. Hilton does. I'm sorry. You know what? You dumb Steve at the first sign of trouble. I think it's a bit late for apologies. Wait. This has to be totally off the record. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And then I saw her stop off at a minicab office. And so she took a minicab part of the way and then she carried on on foot. To Tim's flat? Yes. She went inside? Yes. Roz got out of the cab to avoid the traffic cameras. She was inside Tim's flat while Nick was waiting outside in his car, like Marion and Jeff. And then he sees something. Uh, around seven, a man came out of the flat, and then an hour later, he came back with a couple of shopping bags. Oh, what was in these bags? I don't know. All I remember is there was a big tube sticking out of one of them, like a. a like a, a roll of something. That fits with the security cameras at the DIY store that evening. A large roll of plastic sheet. Can you describe this man? Medium height, medium build, um, receding hair, fair hair. Tim Myfield. And then there's this. When did you leave Tim's flat? Uh, about 11. A woman came out of the flat and she was looking at my car. She, she, she'd arrived a few minutes earlier in a, a nurse's uniform. Tim's downstairs neighbour who told us she mistook Nick's car for a minicab. Well, I thought she might get suspicious, so I, I left. I drove home. Your wife says different. She was home. I was sick from work. You wouldn't come rolling in until nine the following morning. No, no, that was her. She was the one that was out all night. It's hard to know who to believe, Nick or Oz. A traffic camera spotted Nick's car leaving the area just after 11, exactly as he stated in his interview. Maybe he's telling the truth. He, he went home. Ross hired a minicab to avoid the traffic cameras. According to Nick, she was still in the flat when he left. Unfortunately, no one saw her leave. Well, we know she was on foot. That's a hell of a distance to walk all the way home. My car was at the minicab firm. That's much nearer. I'll check it out. Ros Huntley pitched to put the minicab firm as a walk-in. No name given, no contact information. 
And the place doesn't have security cameras. Yeah, well, she knew them one to pick, all right. One of the drivers recalled a woman as being dark-skinned, but that was all. And no one saw her return the next day for her car. Sorry, sir. Well, that's it. We've lost her. The trail's gone cold. No, it hasn't. But Tim, I feel died of severe blood loss. There's no way anyone managed to kill him and clear up the whole crime scene without getting blood stains on their clothing. A, a search of the crime scene uncovered spare hangers in Tim's wardrobe that bore grey synthetic fibres, probably from a tracksuit. Now, this item of clothing has never been found. And the killer took the tracksuit. It'd be the perfect choice. It's loose fitting and it's also unisex. It could have been worn by Roz just as easily by Nick. Yeah, well, that's all very good, but it doesn't really tell us what either of them were doing next. Well, actually, it does, sir. Tim's murderer couldn't risk being seen in a new outfit. By wearing it, the tracksuit could have become contaminated with his or her DNA. So he or she had to dispose of it. Their next move had to be to return home to pick up another change of clothes. Roz Huntley knows inside out all the mistakes offenders make in the hours following a crime. And as SIO, she was aware that nobody even knew Tim was dead yet. And she knows when his body's found, those 24 hours around the time of death are going to be the main focus of the efforts to pick up the evidence trail. Now, if they'd have had the guts, they'd have sat tight on that evidence before finally disposing of it as far away as possible from their known haunts. Right, well, let's see what they were up to on the days following Tim Ifield's murder. Listen up. We're to conduct a citywide security camera survey for the period beginning the 19th of March. The suspects are Nicholas Huntley and DCI Roseanne Huntley. ANPR survey targets the registered vehicles. Now, if either of them made a false move, we need to find it. Let's go. On the medical side, we'll make sure you get the best treatment, no matter what. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I wish they could be, particularly in the circumstances, but certain things can't be ignored. My husband... I understand, sir. Hence, I've recused myself from leading the inquiry. I wish it were enough. There are unresolved allegations against you. Now, I'm sure I can persuade everyone to conclude proceedings quietly if you intend to resign. It's the only way you take back control, and it's the only way to avoid further challenges to the charging of Michael Farmer. I've given everything to this job. Everything. I'm not bent, sir. I'm a diligent, dedicated officer, a loyal officer. Of course. Why aren't you backing me, sir? I am. But AC-12's findings extend further to your husband's solicitor and you. Jimmy Lakewell and me, how? They claim between you, you had prior knowledge of Michael Farmer's criminal record. It's going to be such an uphill struggle to fight. Resign, and it'll all be behind you. me for the operation on her arm. The doctors tried to save him, but it was already dead. The infection had spread into her bloodstream, but she was the one that was trying to hide all of this. She was the one that was avoiding seeing our GP. Why was she trying to hide it? She said that she grazed her hand on some brickwork. Now, I was doubting that, and so was the doctor, because, because they found that it was infected with MRSA, which must have come from another person. What is it, sir? Well, the hospital was forced to disclose the details of Ros Huntley's medical condition, and uh, apparently it started with a, a cut in her arm that then became infected. But look at the date. Nick Huntley says he first noticed his wife was wearing a plaster on her arm. the day after Tim Ifield's murder. It's not possible to examine the patient's amputated hand. It was incinerated, standard practice. But the samples that the surgeons took, the infection swabs and tissue biopsies and stuff, you still have those. How specific can you get about the infection? Well, um, Caroline, the laboratory can do whole genome sequencing of the bacteria. 
Well, I think it's about as specific as DNA profiling a person. From the victim's body, could the bacteria be matched to the bacteria that came from him? How old's the body? He died seven weeks ago. I'm no expert, but I imagine by now I'd be like a garden overrun with weeds. Sorry. Just getting your medication. Sorry. Can you just explain how MRSA from one person can get into the wound of another person? MRSA is a commensal organism. It lives naturally and harmlessly on the carrier, usually inside the nose. Um, you can imagine how easily the bacteria can transfer to the carrier's own hand and then infect your Sorry, wound. Sorry, it lives in the carrier's nose? Yeah. OK, you've been a great help, thank you. Weren't there fibres removed at post-mortem from Tim Ifield's nose? They were believed to be from a balaclava he wore shortly before his death. Yeah, that's right. Right, well, the fibres were sampled just a few days after his death. There is a chance it's still infected with the MRSA bacteria if Tim was a carrier. Right, OK. Leave that with me. Like, I'll get onto the labs, I'll make it a matter of priority. Thanks so much for this, Jodie. I'm happy to help, Mum. You said you found something? Oh, yes, Mum. I, um... I ran a database check to see why AC12 might question a link between you and Mr Lake. Well, nothing turned up regarding a professional connection. As you said, you only know him socially through your husband. So, I ran Mr Lakewell's name as a cross-check with other case keywords. Lakewell was Michael Farmer's solicitor when Farmer was convicted of rape as a 16-year-old. What? What does that mean, exactly? I'm not sure, Jodie. I need you to do one more thing for me. Yeah, sure, no problem. I need you to carry out some telecoms inquiries. Will you do that for me, please? How are you getting on, Sam? Both Roz and Nick Huntley's cars have shown up all over town, but both their movements check out only with their known haunts. Home, work. I reckon Roz knows the locations of the AMPR cameras. Yeah, and avoided them all. The wee witch. We're now going through all the CCTV and traffic cameras ourselves. God, it's a bit of a tall order given the time we've got. Still after you, Mom. I thought you should know that AC12. I've just requested access to Tim's flat. Thank you, Jerry. Right. This is where Tim's body was found. There was that one interesting piece of forensics. The uh, here, the isolated blood spatter. Someone went to a lot of trouble to make that appear. It was Tim's blood. I mean, why not just wipe it up like the rest? Yeah, it's a tiny speck of blood. I mean, on the night of the murder, the killer, he mops up all these pools of blood. But mind you, this is easily miss. Yeah, then maybe Huntley spotted it when she returned to the crime scene a few days later to investigate the murder. When she saw it, she got scared that it could have been her husband's blood. Or hers. I was here on the day. The police was crawling with FIs and coppers and... The only way she could have tampered with this particular evidence... is when it got back to the station. Yeah. And she needed access to the evidence that she'd disposed of because that is the only source of Tim's blood. Yes, yeah, Steve. Sir. Ros Hundley's movements. Concentrate on the day you found Tim Ifield's body. 23rd. Yeah, the 23rd, straight through to the early hours of the morning of the 24th. That's the window. That's when she had to play her hand. 23rd of March, 1500 onwards through to the early hours of the 24th. Ros Huntley's car, Tim Ifield's flat. Find it. Thank you for coming to me. There are restrictions on you visiting Polk Avenue while inquiries are ongoing. Hope you're not too uncomfortable here, ma'am. The searches are nearly done, so you should be able to go home soon. 
He told me to contact you if I remembered anything unusual about my husband's behaviour the night of Tin's murder. Yes. The following morning, he was unloading the washing machine. But there was only one item that I could make out. A navy jumper. Well, we've seized all your husband's clothing from your address, so we'll see if we can track down this navy jumper. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, Mom. Steve, you're going to want to hear this. We've got the results from the lab. Examination of the wool fibres detected post-mortem in Tim Ifield's nose found they were overgrown with MRSA. Whole genome sequence improves the organism. It's indistinguishable from the strain of MRSA swabbed from Ros Huntley's infected wound. Sorry, but this only provides evidence that Ros Huntley was involved in a struggle with Tim on some occasion before he died. What if Nick Huntley walked in on the struggle? I mean, he could still be the killer. We're closer, but we're not there yet. Yeah. Hello? Yes, Superintendent is. Yes, thank you. Thank you. What is it, sir? Murder squad. They've just sent a piece of Nick Huntley's clothing in for urgent forensic analysis. They've got another 12 hours to hold him. This is it, guys. Make or break. Sir. They don't need to be able to fully prove your guilty. That's for trial. They just need to cross a threshold of credible evidence. And in their eyes, Roz is a credible witness. They're all on her side. The lot of them. I got them to bring in an independent team, Nick. They were anti-corruption officers. Ross was scared of them. They kept coming after her. Not AC-12? Yeah. Please, Jimmy, but just get them on the case. Okay. I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to lose everything. My Nick, kids. Nick, <laughs> I'll do my best. Sorry. Re impartiality. I could speak to my chief super if you think there's anything else we could be doing. No, we're all good, thank you. Great. Yep. Sir? So it's a late on that, yeah. I uh, lost track of time there. What is it? We've got something else, sir. All oh, right. Sir, Rose Huntley's car on the afternoon of 23rd of March. Now, this is after she left the crime scene when Tim Ifill's body was first discovered, and she's heading in the direction of home. That's Rose Huntley at Polk Avenue. And for some reason, she decided to come into the station late that night. So you remember we impounded Ros Huntley's phone to look for GPS data the night of Tim Ifield's murder? Well, she switched off her phone at a crucial period so we couldn't place her at Tim's flat. Now, fortunately, we got access to the phone after the 24th, so the movements we've just seen here are stored on the phone. And? And GPS data confirms that she went home after leaving Tim's flat. It also confirms that she travelled from home to Polk Avenue, as seen here. However, Huntley switched off her phone at 0, 0100 hours on the 24th to 0, 0400 hours when she set off from home to Polk Avenue. And that's the exact same precaution she took to cover her tracks when she went to Tim's flat on the night of the murder. Right. A body's been found. You're the SIO. You wouldn't switch off your phone, not in a million years. She was definitely up to something. Yeah, and whatever it was was between 0, 0100 hours and 0, 0400 hours. So we've got a window of only three hours to look at, I and mean, there's a chance we'll spot where she went to in that time. Good work. All right, everybody, listen up. We've got a new window between 0, 0100 and 0, 0400 hours on the 24th. We're looking for any sightings of DCI Huntley's vehicle, what she did, where she went. This is the final push. Come on. We cannot fail. For the DIR, DC Antonioni is showing the interviewee item reference TRH7. TRH7 is a man's navy blue jumper. Whose clothing is this, Mr Huntley? It could be mine. I don't know. It could be, it could be someone else's. Sweat deposits and skin cells detected on the collar match your DNA. Like I said, it could be... It could be mine. 
I'm going to read from a report just received from our forensic scientist. In addition, human hair bearing follicular cells was detected on TRH7. DNA matched a control sample relating to Timothy Ifield. No. With no. greater than 99.9% .9 probability. I've never met Timothy Ifield. I've never been anywhere near him. So you're admitting it to your clothing? <laughs> I'd like some time in private to confer with my client. 2125. Stopping the date. Yeah, what is it? We found Rose Huntley's car in the early hours of the 24th. 2.45 a.m. She's coming off the A38, heading north on the A51, out towards the chase. No cameras out there. No cameras and a huge radius for the search area. It's an impossibly large area, sir. She disposed of evidence. We can't prove it. Without that evidence, we don't know if Rose really was the killer. Sorry, sir. Don't be daft. I'm proud of both of you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right, everyone, time to go home. I'm afraid so, Mum. The CPS agreed that the threshold test had been met. Your husband's been charged with Tim Eiffel's murder and he's going to be remanded. And they're also looking at him in connection with Leonie Collisdale's disappearance and Hannah Reznikova's abduction. You still there, Mum? Thank you, Jodie. I have to be strong for my children. Kate, please. Kate. Yeah, sorry. Rose Huntley ventured miles from home, but we know she still made it back by 4 a.m. That's massive travel time. She only gave herself a few minutes to actually dispose of the evidence. And it's 3 a.m. It, it's pitch dark. Yeah, she's not going to risk dumping it somewhere random only for the evidence to be an easy find in broad daylight. Exactly. The only reason she'd risk travelling so far is if she knows precisely where she's going. I doubt she's ever dumped evidence before. But she searched for it. We're looking for a search Ross Huntley's team carried out where the evidence was so well hidden it took a very long time to find. And we're concentrating in and around the chase within a 20 mile radius of Ross Huntley's last known position at 0300 on the 24th. Find Huntley's destination. So the searches are all complete. You can have your own rooms again. That's better, isn't it? Right, it's yours. I'll make us a nice breakfast, yeah? They still love their dad. Mom, I found the information you were requesting. The telecom's activity around the time of the attack on DS Arnett. Doubt it matters anymore. Is there anything else I can do? Thanks, Jodie.
Two years ago, Ros Huntley's team investigated a domestic murder. The boyfriend always denied involvement and it was looking like he was going to get away with it due to lack of evidence until his blood-stained clothing was found in this area. All pulse searches had failed. It was a chance finding by a member of the public. The murderer confessed to dumping the evidence in this area. Right, OK, everybody. We're going to start from here and find out, OK? So, Diane, you're with me up top. All right. Don't leave this to me. You keep at it. Go on. I have to remind you, sir, you've been served a Regulation 15 notice. I was aware of that. We're following a legitimate lead. Sir, if I've been insubordinate, I've acted alone. My officers are simply following orders. Round up your team and leave this to murder squad. Sir, there's a patch of ground. It looks like it's been recently dug up. Put a cordon around it. Cordon. Carry on. Sir. I'll see you at the hearing. Don't expect it to go well. H. Roseanne Huntley, you're under arrest. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not Stop. mention me. Anything I say, I say to AC-12. You're expecting someone else? Um... DC Jodie Taylor. I asked her to call you. I was worried that if you knew it was me, you would have turned me down. I'm under arrest. Oh, my God. I want you to represent me. I would have turned you down, Ross. There's a clear conflict of interest with Nick. Please, Jimmy. Just for a few hours. You're the only person I trust right now. Referring to evidence uncovered on the Queen's Chase woodland in a remote area excavated in conjunction with Murder Squad. Item reference YLM1. YLM1 is a rucksack found buried in a shallow pit. Skin cells detected on the zip fasteners of YLM1 and follicular hair cells found in the front compartment both match control samples relating to Timothy Ifield. We believe YLM1 belonged to Timothy Ifield. Image 25 shows item reference YLM5 to YLM8. Items of blood-stained female clothing found in a rucksack buried on the chase. The bloodstains match control samples relating to Timothy Ifield. The quantity of blood deposited indicates these items of clothing were in close contact with Timothy Ifield as he bled to death. These items of clothing bear DNA deposits matching an individual whose DNA profile is held on the police database. Do you have anything to say? At this point, DCI Huntley. No comment. Image 32. Image 32 shows item reference YLM9. YLM9 and 10, a grey tracksuit composed of fibres matching those detected on a hangar found at Tim Ifield's flat. It also bears traces of DNA matching the same individual as the set of blood-stained clothing. Now, this grey tracksuit was stolen by the killer at the scene of the crime and then worn to dump the bloodstained clothing that would have connected him or her to the murder. On screen, image 19, 
showing item reference MRT6. MRT6 is a forensic oversuit. Blood deposited on MRT6 matches control samples relating to Timothy Ifield. Only one other person's DNA was detected on this item. MRT3, a balaclava. MRT4, jacket. MRT5, gloves. All these items bear traces of Timothy Ifield's DNA. It would appear Ifield was also equipping himself to simulate the appearance of Balaclava Man. Or Occam's razor. He was Balaclava Man. Image 51 and 52, items BTW1 and BTW2, a mobile phone and a laptop <clears throat> computer. Both match models registered to Timothy Ifield, both severely corroded by acid, rendering their hard drives unreadable. Skin cells matching to Timothy Ifield were detected on the phone's touch ID sensor. Some of these cells show a chemical profile, suggesting they'd been deposited after his death. It seems the murderer used the amputated fingers to work the phone. Image 88, RM1. RM1 was recovered from the cache of evidence found buried on Queen's Chase. RM1 is a power saw. Deposits of Timothy Ifield's blood were detected on the blade. So the killer did not go armed to Tim's flat. That saw was already there. We know that because Tim had bought some power tools at a DIY store. Image 93, CED2. CED2 are the amputated fingertips of the second, third and fourth digit of the right hand. They're a DNA match to Timothy Ifield. The saw blade bears cells matching these fingers. It was used to amputate the fingers shortly after Tim Ifield's death. Biological material detected under the nails of the amputated fingers matches the DNA of the same person whose DNA was found on the blood-stained female clothing. Tim was dying. His last act was to claw at the murderer's hand to capture their DNA under his fingernails. So not only do we have the murderer's DNA, but we have the exact strain of bacteria detected on Tim that was grown from the wound that he inflicted on his killer. Now, do you have anything to say now, DCI Huntley? At this point, I have to declare a conflict of interest, as Mrs. Huntley is likely to state she was present, possibly unwillingly, and that the actual murder was committed by my client, Nicholas Huntley, in which case Mrs. Huntley requires alternative legal representation. I'm afraid you'll have to pause the interview there. to accidentally killing Timothy Ifield. Ross. You don't have to say anything. His blood's all over my clothes. My DNA in his fingernails. Our children will need a parent. I acted alone. My husband took no part. My witness testimony was false. And I withdraw it. Tim's DNA found on my husband's clothes was planted by me a few minutes after my husband's arrest, using a hairbrush that I stole from Tim Ifield's flat the morning after his death. All proceedings against Nick Huntley should be stopped. So Tim Ifield blew the whistle on you, but you concealed your movements that night. Was it your premeditated intention to harm Timothy Ifield? I went to Tim's flat to challenge him, that's all. I covered my tracks purely in case he decided to raise an official complaint. Things became heated. It was a struggle. I hit my head, blacked out. And when I came round, he was in his forensic oversuit. I was laid out on plastic sheeting. And he had tools to dismember my body. Are you telling me that one of our most experienced FIs didn't know that you weren't dead? He must have tried to find a pulse. And when he failed, he jumped to the conclusion that it wasn't there. And when I came round, he panicked. And when I tried to fight back, he panicked even more. He knew I'd be able to accuse him of attempted murder. 
and we struggled over the saw. There was an accident. I was trying to wrestle it free. When it nicked his neck. It was like slow motion. That first trickle of blood, and then a surge. Bled out all over himself, all over me. He clawed at my hand, and then he was dead. As a police officer, it was your lawful duty to report that death. I honestly did think about calling it in and telling the truth, but I know the law, how hard it is to prove self-defense. I've seen a thousand crime scenes and no one, no one leaves that with their life intact. Tim was gone. I couldn't save his life, but I could try to save mine. So you cleaned up the crime scene? Yes. But you were disturbed the next morning by Hannah Reznikova. I saw her on Tim's computer. He had that stupid surveillance system of his. How could you access the computer? It was just an automatic feed, the image. It came up. So you used his finger to activate the fingerprint ID on his phone? One of the amputated fingers. That enabled me to text Hannah, tell her to go away. I found a notes file on his phone with passwords. And that meant that I could use those to take control of his phone and computer. You waited before disposing of the evidence. Rash actions in the first few hours of the downfall of most offenders. I thought I could think of everything. What you did think of was blaming everybody else but yourself, including your own husband. You've tried to frame Michael Farmer, an innocent, vulnerable suspect, not to mention Hannah Reznikova. And you've cast unwarranted aspersions on the integrity of AC-12 and myself. Justice could not have been further from your thoughts. Well, here's justice. Roseanne Huntley, I shall now be seeking the authority of the Crown Prosecutor to charge you with these offences, the murder of Timothy Ifield and perverting the course of justice. Do you understand? Yes, sir. At this point, I'd like to stress that on the night of Timothy Ifield's death, Mrs. Huntley was in a state of shock and fear and experienced a momentary loss of control. I'll be recommending a plea of manslaughter based on those grounds. Trust me, Ross. I do. And so did Nick. In fact, when DSR not informed Nick that he was going to interview him in connection with Tim's death, who was the first person that Nick called? Not me. Am I still a police officer? Yes, for the moment. Thank you, sir. James Lakewell, you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be used in evidence. <clears throat> now, uh, wait a minute. My colleague, D.C. Taylor, saw telecommunications records from the 6th of April, the day that D.S. Arnott was assaulted at my husband's office building. Nick received an incoming call to his registered mobile from D.S. Arnott. Immediately afterwards, he made a call to Mr. Lakewell's registered phone. This call lasted approximately five minutes. Nick was seeking my legal advice. I asked DC Taylor to look into calls made between unregistered mobiles. Burner phones of the type used for illicit activity in the vicinity of your office. She identified the following call made from this unregistered mobile. Just a few minutes after the call between you and Nick. So I'm afraid I, I don't see the relevance. I'm sure you will once AC-12 have had a chance to analyse the calls and movements made by the burner phone detected at your office. It's going to match your known movements and activities. <clears throat> I think I should leave. I think you should sit down, fella, or I'll handcuff you to that desk. Sit down. The call James Lakewell made was received by another burner phone. This second burner phone made a call immediately afterwards to a third burner phone. Please, let's look at this third burner phone. 
Said phone is no longer active, but using historical triangulation data, we were able to track the phone's movements. The call was received in the Moss Heath area, and the phone proceeded directly to the location where DS Arnott was assaulted a few minutes later. This third burner phone belonged to the man who abducted Hannah, who planted evidence in Michael Farmer's house, and who assaulted DS Arnott, balaclava man. James Lakewell defended Michael Farmer at his first offence. I knew nothing about it, you've got to believe me. It was Jimmy who served up Michael Farmer to be framed, not by me, but by the people who are really behind this cover-up. Which brings us to the second burner phone, the one that received Jimmy Lakewell's call on the 6th of April and contacted Balaclava Man. Item reference RH1. This is a napkin from the Kingsgate Hotel. The man who gave it to me used the number for what I believed at the time was limited to illicit sexual activity. This is the number that got the call from James Lakewell and passed the information to Balaclava Man. It belongs to Assistant Chief Constable Derek Hilton. You are under arrest. For perverting the course of justice, this interview is now terminated. Steve, hold them till we can arrange custody. Kate, you're with me. Secure these exits. Sir. Alone, door shut. His PA says she'll hold him there if he tries to leave. Yeah. AC 12, stand on. There was a conspiracy. I was never in on it. I thought I was playing them, but I was the one being played. That's half the story. Hilton counted on you putting your career ahead of the truth. Jimmy set me up with Hilton. He knew how desperate I was to close the case and how open I was to being pressurised. No one needed me to point that out. Tim Ifield dead. Michael Farmer, Hannah Reznikova in prison. Where I'm sitting, it looked like you made those choices all by yourself. I'm not a bad person. Maybe you would have done the same if you'd been in my situation. I'd have stopped sooner. I'd be able to walk and you'd have two hands. Remain seated. Four go. Thank you, guys. So he's balaclava men. Balaclava men, plural. If you don't do their bidding, the body gets taken out of cold storage with your DNA all over it. You think Hilton's top dog? How can he bricks it every time a new body's found? Tell us who he is. We'll give you immunity. There are some people there's no immunity from. Thanks for holding them. We're taking him from here. Taking him where? Protective custody. Assume name, undisclosed location. I'll need to run that by the gaffer. Yeah, sure. Yeah, good to go up here. Set down, Stasi. Steve. Sir, just to let you know, AC9 are here to take Lakewell into protective custody. Hilton's been tipped off. Do not comply. Will do. Thanks, sir. AC-12. Urgent lockdown. Yeah. All good. Good. <clears throat> yeah, on our way down. Turn around, please. Where am I going, exactly? I am not at liberty to disclose. What about me? A uh, different custody location. Another team's coming for you. You want the DIR disc? I'll run off a copy. Nah, nah, you're right, mate. Uh, I don't want to hang about. Stand by for further instructions, yeah? Slow this time of night. What the 
hell are you trying to do? Listen to me, Jamie. We know someone tipped off Hilton. He sent you, didn't he? I just need this lift worker, man. The we'll lifts be have been right. disabled, and you need to wake up, mate. Lightwell isn't going into custody. Hilton's never going to let that happen. But he even told you what route to take, didn't he? No prizes for guessing what's going to happen in transit. You'll just be collateral damage. I'm not going anywhere. Come on, we're taking the stairs. And you're talking bollocks. Right, Hilton's got my back 110%. That's exactly what he said to me. You walk out of here, you're a dead man. Something's not right, sir. I'm police! Come on! Come on! No, no! Stop him! Stop him! Don't do this, Jamie. Jamie, don't. Jamie, there's still a way out for you. Don't trust the wrong man. Don't make the same mistake I did. Back! Back off! <laughs> Cooperate with our inquiry into Hilton and you're in the clear, but that's only if no one gets hurt. There's no way out! Drop the gun! Back off! Drop it! All you've got to do is give me the firearm. Right, secure the exits. You three with me up the stairs. Get the medics to that man. Just give me the fire on. Arm police! Arm police! Don't shoot! Arm police! Drop the firearm, Jimmy. Do as he says, Jamie. Listen to him, Jamie. There's a fellow lying dead downstairs because he didn't cooperate. Don't test us, Jimmy. No sign of a struggle. No evidence anyone else was here, sir. Suicide. Well, you might not recognise this location, but a body was found here. Oliver Stevens Lloyd, the social worker trying to blow the whistle on child sexual exploitation. His death was made to look like suicide, too. We know Hilton had been tipped off. He could have easily have made a run for it. Or he knew the game was up. Right, who's in charge here? The man you shot in the lobby, sir. He's been identified as a known violent criminal with long-term associations going all the way back to Tommy Hunter. Activity on Balaclava man's burner phone matches all his known haunts. His biometrics are an exact match to the images of Balaclava man captured on the night of Leonie Collisdale's disappearance and the day of the attack on Steve. Even down to his boot print. You got them, sir? I got one of them. There may be others still at large. God knows what they're up to. And the consistent method has been to exploit vulnerable young women, to blackmail officers interfering. They've been criminated in serious offences. They had that hold over Hilton, too. Whether or not he was H. Meaning he wasn't top dog. Top in the police. But not among the real criminals. What? Ben Copper's not criminal enough for your son. Sir. I'm satisfied Hitch was ACC Hilton. Take my photograph down off that board, kid.
This is beginning to feel like a life's work. Line of Duty will return for a new series here on BBC One. Go online to the website right now for a special Q&A with AC12 Stephen Kate and also the show's writer and creator Jed Mercurio.